Thank you. Um, right, I'm going to try not to get too close to the microphone because I tend to get sh <laughs> shouty and ranty as well as some of the some of you guys have seen me before. Um, yeah, my name's Dane. Uh, I'm going to do a few poems. I'm going to start with this one. It's called uh, Last Train Back to Brixton, and it goes a bit like this. Get yourself up, um, your drunk cousin's buzzing and the city that never sleeps will meet me in the morning. Thoughts forming and you misunderstood me. Even seeing the meanings I used to dream about seems to mean something different and in the distance my influence is impotent. It's the journey and the destination, brave and delayed trains and underground stations at one of the clock in the morning. The last train back to Brixton burrowing beneath the city. The 1.11am from Victoria to Brighton, packed with passengers cradling suitcases between their legs. Public transportation became my way of life sometime in 2005. Thank you. <laughs> I have a, a rough set list jotted down, but at the, t at the moment it's on the top of my head and I think I know what it is. By the way, sorry if I sound a bit bunged up, I, I've had a cold this week, and hay fever, I was talking about it earlier. Getting a cold and hay fever at the same time is not good. Um, this is a new poem though, it's called uh, Coming Clean. Hey, come with me, we'll build steam machines that harness the power of electricity. Smashing atoms together at 99.99% the speed of light. And all energy has to dissipate eventually. And like a car rolling down a hill, you can't keep on rolling forever. I've got this steampunk world just hiding in my head, waiting for documentaries. I want to see this town from a weather balloon. I want to heal myself with helium and feel premium like a deviant. Sealing fate like a coelacanth shape. We use fake currencies and you could chase volcanoes or erupt abruptly like an up uppercut. And our terraformed a terraform formula. Mad scientists coughing into beakers and somehow learning to juggle. Hey, you don't have to act your rage and your life is a speck of dust in the sunlight. Hey, your life is nice, so will you swap it with mine? Hey, I'll come clean because I don't have many friends, but the ones I do have are good to me. Cheers. Um, this is two poems that I tend to kind of run in together into one and actually thinking back to it, uh, they're kind of love poems I guess but um, the, the kind of the way that they're addressed changes so it's kind of obvious I think but um, uh, anyway this first one's called There's Only Her Between Them and the second one you'll probably be able to guess the title. She didn't ask me to write her a poem, but I wanted to write her a poem, so I wrote her a poem. And it was kind of hard to write her a poem, because I used long lines in a tiny notebook, so I had to use indentations to show where one line ended and another line began. And my boss stared at me while I smoked a cigarette and tried to say what I wanted to say, because I didn't know what I wanted to say. And anyway, it's hard to concentrate when you got a toothache. But that's probably my fault, because I drink too much coffee and always have at least one sugar, even though she thinks I'm sweet enough. And I accidentally stole a book and carried it around in case I bumped into her, even though I make excuses to make to bump into her because I like the way she bumps, whatever that means. And I stayed up all night and forgot to eat until she reminded me, and I don't know the day because there's only her between them. And so I went to bed at 11 p.m. and I had this dream. It was a good dream. It was a dream about me and her reading books in front of an open fire, even though I don't have an open fire, and I'm pretty sure she doesn't have an open fire either. So I wrote this poem while I sat outside the charity shop and watched the dog that was tied up outside of it and it reminded me of how she tries so hard to make everyone else happy that she forgets about herself and how I make her happy and how she makes me happy too. And I want to kiss you. I want to kiss you when it's raining and there's no one around and neither of us is upside down. We're just holding hands. I want to kiss you when everything goes wrong. I want to kiss you like you probably hopefully want to kiss me maybe. I want us to kiss each other when we're dying of thirst in the Sahara and we're both trying to spit through our parched lips to give the other one enough water to make it to the nearest village. I want to kiss you in the winter. I want to kiss you before one of us falls down the stairs and ends up dead in the morgue and everyone comes out of the woodwork and you just want to tell them to fuck off, okay? You don't know the pain I feel. I want to kiss you before our bones return to dust and what with there being no afterlife, we stay together in the voices of kids singing nursery rhymes. I want to kiss you even though I never like the little bastards anyway. I want to kiss you in zoos and on farms. I want to kiss you in Amsterdam, New York and Paris. I want to kiss you when the zombie apocalypse comes and you're infected and everyone's like, nah, don't kiss her, and I'm like, I'm still going to kiss her. And then I kiss you and then you bite my tongue off and we all become infected and die. <laughs> uh, 
Um, this is the uh, obligatory uh, book pink. So I've got a, a book called Eyes Like Lighthouses When the Boats Come Home. Uh, it's available on Amazon and stuff. I've got copies available for £7 this evening, but also due to a massive cock up in the printing process that was entirely my fault, uh, I accidentally printed about 15, 20 copies of it that are really pixelated on the front and back covers. So the inside is fine, covers are knackered, and I've got some of those, so I'm selling those for £3 just to try and make my money back on those. So if you want one of those. Um, but speaking of lighthouses, this poem's called Like a Landlocked Lighthouse, and it's kind of about the internet. Uh, which one's, I'm trying to think, Neil, I can see you over there. At one point there is the poem that has the line in it that you like, but I don't think it's this one, so forget about that. <laughs> I'll hold my breath. Okay, yeah, just bear with me. Okay. My friends live their lives online, so do I, and sometimes I agree to see them to see if they're real and not just pictures on Flickr or Instagram. Mom said I'd grow up and I'd change the way we communicate, but maybe she's crazy. I'm 26 years old and I spend my life in front of computer screens, reading Wikipedia because it's easier than dealing with people. Some people live their life like a staging site. They're afraid to get stuck in, so they stand out. You know the type with their undead eyes, so stubborn like a landlocked lighthouse. Time to get out from the screen and start living. Now you have an aphorism to live by. Thank you. Um, yeah, why not? I've gone for the more, uh, I say, lovey-dovey uh, poems. I mean, I don't. You may notice from my style that I basically just rant about things. And so, if I do, if I do a love poem, I rant about love. Uh, politics is the other one, but I've tried to keep that toned down today for some reason. Um, but this is about a colour called Vanta Black, which uh, it's basically the blackest black that you can get. There we go, you know about it, yeah. Um, it's, it's scientists doing mad things. Didn't they, they found a new blue the other yeah. day as well? They did a new blue the other day. But this is the blackest black that you can get, and it's called Vanta Black. You look good in Vanta Black, the blackest of blacks, built from a forest of carbon nanotube arrays on aluminium foil, absorbing light at 99.99% efficiency and turning it into heat or something. Now, I don't do science or colours, but I know that you look good covered in vertically aligned nanotube arrays. It's like Sir Anish Kapoor who said it's like paint and imagined a space so dark you forgot who you were and what time it was. You have great resistance to vibrations. Greater thermal stability in military applications, and I know you're not NASA, but you look good in Vanta Black. Now we just need to find a brighter red. Thank you. <laughs> By the way, I have no sense of time. Are you, have you reminded to tell me when I've got five minutes left? Okay, I'll just keep going then. <laughs> um, what have we got here? Um, okay, so actually, the, this poem here, um, it's in Eyes Like Lighthouses, but I really like the title, so I might use it for my next book whenever that gets finished, which is going to take a long time. But uh, this was actually an open mic night. Somebody told me that, um, they, they watched my set, and then afterwards they told me my poems were very kiss, kiss, death, death. So I, I wrote a poem called Kiss, Kiss, Death, Death. <laughs> Kiss, kiss, death, death, war, war, war. Oil spills and corruption and too much booze to handle. Charity death matches with reality TV stars played out in magazines with names like Feel Good and You. Natural hypocrisy born not from dishonesty but democracy because feelings change over time as evidence comes to light and that's a good thing. Dead romance from an undead romantic, making decisions independently and then forming committees to arrive at the same decision six months later when you've lost your competitive advantage. Documentaries about Auschwitz, daring me to dare to be depressive, but it's fine for presidential candidates to add Muslims to a database. Database this motherfucker, and speaking of Donald Trump, Donald Trump's huge no erection. <laughs> Money talks, it swears and bribes and spits, picks meat from between its teeth and sweats beside you at the bus stop. Votes for British nationalists, buys albums by the wanted, stalks TV stars on Twitter and wears replica clothing without irony. Money is rude to all weevils, it burns holes in pockets causing ruptures for sport when we are all the same. Whether born with silver spoons or generations of debt, impoverished on the streets of Sao Paulo. Money is the mean little bastard aged 11 pulling the wings off butterflies who called his father a bastard for simply standing up to him. Money is the blood pulling on the floors of slaughterhouses, the guilty secret that consumers must never know. Money is metal, the acidic taste of hangovers your mother never mentioned. The tears of 17 year olds volunteered for war now showered with brains as bullets hit the skulls of their commanding officers. 
Money is old, fat, rich wankers with their tops off, dying early due to heart disease and buried in an unmarked grave with no one left to love them when they're gone. Then again, perhaps I'd feel different if I had any. <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay, so in in a weird turn of events, I mean, I, I, I'm always trying to get up in front of people and promote my books and play music and all this sort of thing. Um, I have problems with anxiety as well, and it's like a, a weird, um, I don't know, a bit of a contrast in my personality, I suppose, but I wrote a poem about how, how that feels, uh, is, and it's called Dying. I think I might be dying, but I might not be dying, but either way I'm going to die, whether the sky falls in or I die by my own hands, and I don't want to die because no one ever does, but if I do die, I'm glad I didn't die before I met you. Anxiety sucks and it fucks up your life until you're lying in bed with a duvet on your head crying. And this is my moment of weakness, because life can seem bleak and the days become weeks and disappear again. And you might still be breathing, but you're still feeling evil and sleeping uneasily. I just don't understand how people plan their lives out. Get married and have kids and watch TV evening after evening when I can't see past the weekend. And I get that there's a lot to play for, because people recognize potential and think that I'm mental. But no one's saying ever change world the world for better or for worse. Thank you. Okay, um, Neil, it's this one. It's got that line in it you like. Uh, and it's called Ayahuasca. And basically, I kind of went off on a bit of a tangent writing a nonsense poem after watching a documentary about Ayahuasca, which is a drug that is quite often used, I, I think, by... Like, I don't, I don't know why I'm going to get it wrong, but, but it's by an indigenous people somewhere, and it's basically a hallucinogen. So I thought, right, let's try and channel the spirit of that. Dry skin like lightning, chained to the rocks and coming down without a fight. Two-toned and terrible, all out tired and never tested in bonsai kamikaze runs. Never surrender unless the guns are outnumbered. Solemn-faced heroes holding their stomachs in. Brutal nothings promised godless and falling down the stars at oblique angles. Tins of food piled loosely bouncing up and down along the waterfront. The shortest wavelength is the distance between two points. Post-coital and loveless wasting lives in line just to fix things that can't be fixed. Irreparably water damaged at the hands of a Baptist. Human heads like tangerines with teeth marks in, uneasily bleeding past participles. Sheep's milk, milk sheepishly and screaming for tears, cooped up in the back of an unmarked police car. All I can do is tell the truth, that's it. There's no quick switch and no time to quit by the exits. I have no filter and it gets me into trouble, because trouble follows me around like an abusive boyfriend. An abusive boyfriend follows me around like trouble. Thank you. <laughs> Um, okay, I think this is probably my last one, as long as I get it right. If, it, if I don't get it right, I always get this thing as well. I'm like, oh, I, I messed it up. I better try and quickly pretend I'm doing a different poem. Um, this is another new one. It's called Damned. Damn right I know it, going slowly over the same sober homework, the broken noses of the stone statues in Marlow Community Gardens, big branches falling from trees hitting you oops upside the head with a broken neck. I'm the kind of militant who goes for drive-by book drops, throwing no rest for the wicked out of car windows. When I was 14, I got hit in the face by a pencil case, which probably explains why I write stuff. I am a right royal nuisance, like when I play football and I two-footed tackle until the match is cancelled and I'm free for 15 minutes again. Our mind is a brain sponge, a muscle you can use which improves with use and I'm damned if I do and I'm damned if I don't and I'll be damned if I don't do anything. Our bodies are a temple of doom that we're trapped in forever, or at least until scientists perfect the human head sac transplant. Religion and science, man, I kind of care, but if I'm not going to solve the problem, I'm not going to be consumed by it. Me, I'll be consumed by holy fire, tired and highlighted with a marker pen. Thank you, my name's Dan Cobain. <laughs>